behind me is one of two pumpers we built for Green Bay Fire Department in 2009. This one behind me is the first one we're going to receive and it has 146,000 miles on it. Now I was texting my customer uh, before this video to get a little more context into the history of this truck and kind of the, the usership and this one did an average run of around six miles, you know, out and back. Uh, I think the other one might have a shorter run trip, but that just gives you a sense of just how often this thing is leaving the station and coming back on, on runs. The reason I provide you with that context is because this is the first of two trucks that we're going to be taking the pump module and body off of and remounting them on brand new Spartan chassis. What I have here is basically the sales proposal and a couple of the change orders that they've added since contracting because it's not just like a new truck that I can walk around and you know point out the obvious on. Um, I want to get into what we're going to do to this truck. Now the reason why they can do this with our product is that from the cab back it's all 304 grade stainless steel and the body and pump module are both bolted construction and they carry a lifetime warranty and they carry a lifetime subframe warranty. So as we're plucking these things off this chassis, we're gonna be inspecting them and if there's any sort of fatigue or failure, that's on custom fire. We're gonna stand behind that. If there's damage, and believe me, there usually is, you know, we'll fix it. But these bodies are extremely durable. How many of you have 146,000 miles on your pumper body and would put it back in service for another 146,000 miles? Now Green Bay is happy with the Spartan chassis. It's served them well. It's an aluminum cab, so it does have corrosion. You know, aluminum corrodes, regardless of what Siri will tell you. But stainless steel does not. And they've got the typical corrosion spots around the hardware, the fenders, some of the areas that just take a lot of abuse. And then the interior, is pretty well beat up as well. I mean, this thing has been in uh, aggressive service for 13 years. And if I were to take a poll of most firefighters, if I said, okay, we're gonna replace something on your truck, you're gonna get the same fire pump, you're gonna get the same hose bed height, you're gonna get the same ladder storage, you're gonna get the same intakes and discharges, um, or you can get, and you can get a new chassis or would you rather keep the chassis and replace everything else? Now, some manufacturers don't have that option. <laughs> um, but we do with our pump module and body. So the truck's gonna get all new lighting. It's going to get, um, you know, bed liner on the rub rails, kinda, you know, darken the appearance a little bit, make some, you know, design enhancements and aesthetic treatments. But the functionality is going to be largely the same. We are adding a discharge into the hose bed. Now this truck has already been recertified. We did that as kind of a baseline inspection when it came in because we are going to inspect the pump and recertify it. We're going to rebuild the valves. When we were laying out the scope of the project with the customer, you know, it was kind of a natural request on their part to say, you know, we should do, re redo all the electrical. Because I frankly, I mean, I bet most fire trucks need to be rewired after 13 years. And I said, hold on a sec, what doesn't work? What hasn't worked? Everything works great, everything's worked great. I said, have you had some electrical issues on this truck? They said, no, everything's working fine, it always has. And I said, well then let's leave everything intact. We still have the weatherproof Deutsch connectors, the ultrasonic welded dropouts on all the electrical, braided looms, color-coded wires, printed with the function, as-built wiring diagram. I mean, essentially, they're going to get a new truck out of this whole process, and we're even replacing the doors, the overlays, and um, a lot of the hardware and fenderettes and that sort of thing. But the overall design of the truck is really gonna stay intact because they're happy with the design. And I'm looking at the numbers here and you know we contracted this project, including the chassis, was $355,000 per truck. You know, I know that if I spec'd out this truck new, it would approach or possibly exceed $700,000. So they're harnessing the value of their investment that they put into the pump module, the body, and all the man hours that they've already bought and paid for. I think this is a poignant topic in today's environment. You know, that stainless steel on that body was probably a buck seventy or a buck fifty a pound. Now it's five bucks a pound. Do you really want to buy it all over again? Because where's it going to go once it leaves Green Bay? 
you know, it's going to go into a scrap heap or something. So I can see Julia is wondering how the heck she's going to edit all this stream of consciousness. But you know, it's it's an unorthodox project, I guess, or at least, you know, it's it's not the common run of the mill. We do have a truck in the in the plant right now. It's about a 25 year old truck, and they're adding uh, ultra high pressure to it. We're converting from hinge doors to roll up doors. We're going to replace all the lighting, do some paint work. Um, you know, they're investing in the future of that truck because that's a small town with about you know 7,000 miles on the truck so it, it really it in some cases it makes sense to keep the chassis and update the body which is what they're going to do now back to Green Bay they're just watching the tax dollars they like the configuration it's a known known and um, we're excited to see how this progresses and so stay tuned love to hear your comments as always I'm Wade with custom fire thanks for watching was I saying? My meteorological clock is ticking. <clears throat> All right. Coming free.